right guys, right now I am not in Japan. I'm oh. surprisingly in America. This might be like one of the very rare times I'll be filming in America. I'm here with my friend Andrew. Hello. Um, what's your channel? Where can we catch you? Okay, so I do stuff on my retrospective of Japan. You guys might recognize me from her Super Nintendo World video and maybe one or two e Sapporo videos. Esports and Sapporo. Yeah, videos. like yeah. one or two Sapporo videos. Um, my channel is called the Hokkaiden Gaijin and I actually do my retrospective of living in Hokkaido and why Hokkaido is the best prefecture in Japan. And I moved back to the United States like five months ago. Yeah, so, so. I'm just here visiting for Christmas and the holidays and stuff. He's here um, for the foreseeable well, for future. A while. <laughs> for this foreseeable future. Today, we wanted to discuss what it is like to live in Japan for as long as we have. Me, I'm going on four years. Um, you lived there a full four, four years, or four if not and a half. more, four and a half years. And so, what it's like coming back to America as a visitor like me or coming back and living in America. Um, you always hear of going to Japan or going to a foreign country and experiencing culture shock, mm. but not a lot of people talk about the reverse culture shock that you have coming back to your own culture after living away from it for so long. Um, I'll go through some of mine, but first I want to ask you mm -hmm. if you had to list some of the, the biggest culture shocks about coming from Japan to America, what are they and how'd you deal with them? Toilets. Oh, like, no, toilet. like, like actually toilets are one of the hardest things that I've had to struggle with here. Mm -hmm. And just cleanliness of public bathrooms too. Mm. Um, uh, that's one of my high ones. Another one is um, transport. Transportation mm. has been one that I've struggled with very heavily. I still don't have a car five months later. And I don't know if I want one, but it's because I do work from home, luckily. But not being able to go wherever I want whenever I want yeah. is very hard for me. As well as, I think, just the general nature of how people act sometimes. You yeah. know, when, like, if I go to Japan, you're very much, like, to yourself and you don't talk to anyone unless you know them. And even then, you're like, oh, oh hi. Here, it's like... You stop for 30 minutes You stop for 30 minutes and talk, and you talk good to, like, southern straight, good old too. southern people. Which some people really it's like. It's fine, but... But like, it's not my thing? It used to be my thing, but now I'm just more of, like, why? I left right after college, so it's mm. like, I, I have only lived my adult life in Japan. Right. So. Well, it's oh, you mentioned the bathrooms like <laughs> I've been in I've been in America for 2 weeks now. Um and I've only used the public restroom once. Mm. Um well, luckily I was home for a while. Mm. Um just just mostly staying at home um because of the COVID situation, but like I landed in Dallas, Texas from mm. Tokyo and I like obviously had to go into the bathroom. So I go to the bathroom that's near my next gate for my next transfer flight and it, mm -hmm. it really, it's something you can't understand until you go to Japan and you realize like, oh man, these restrooms are so clean mm -hmm. and you have your own privacy like box. Mm -hmm. It's way more private. Oh, yeah. You can't see people through the little uh, oh, stall. Oh yeah, the stall, like the... <laughs> and they can't see yeah, you. Yeah. And um, you know, I just, one of my favorite things about the Japanese restrooms is that they, it either plays music or usually it like makes a shushing well, bidets. sound. The I, bidets. I, the bidets are like, I miss them so much. Yeah, the bidets. Oh. You can get them, you know, installed in some apartments in America, but they're obviously, they're way less common they're the right not toilets. in public restrooms either because like so. mine i can't like my toilet yeah. uh, the way the base is shaped it won't fit on it oh, like the the kind that i want because i want that toto good stuff the good stuff i want the good stuff with the butt warmer you yes. know i have to have the good yes one. the warm toilet seats I too my apartment has a heated toilet seat mm -hmm. um, back in japan mine always did too um so that's been weird especially in the winter but i guess apartments in america are kept a little more warm but still mm -hmm. there is not you know sitting on ice sometimes. So like, what what else have you noticed? Mm. Um, I think you wanted to talk about transportation too. Yeah, so you could get from Tokyo to Sapporo to Hiroshima to anywhere if you wanted to. Just like, I want to go here today. Yeah. You, it, you take a train. You can take the Shinkansen, you can take a regular train if you're willing to sit there for hours. Mm. But here it's like, oh, I want to go to Tennessee. All right, am I gonna take a flight? Do I need to rent a car? And when renting cars, you know, exist in Japan too. And but it's more like you have a less yeah. likely need to do that. Renting the, the cars mostly good. just for the countrysides, right? We're in Raleigh right now, and uh, my family lives about an hour, hour and a half from here. And it would be so nice if I could just get on a train, you know, pay a thousand yen, which is mm -hmm. like ten bucks, and then go like you know an hour and a half down from here. Mm -hmm. It would be so nice. And that's just something I guess I take it for granted almost oh, yeah. in Japan. Because, like, I guess for me, I had always owned a car since 16 living in the United States. Right. And so for me, that just became a part of 
what I needed to do right. and how I lived. But uh, towards the end of my college years, I'm like, I hate owning a car because I hate having to fill up the gas, yeah. getting it changed. If something's broken, you can't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, in Japan, when I when I learned I didn't have to own a car, um, which was w one thing I asked on my interview process, I was like, I don't want to have to drive. Right. Um, which is why they put me in Sapporo. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. it, it was just like, I really don't have to own a car. I can get anywhere I want on this tra uh, on a train or on even an airplane if I needed to because flights you can find discount flights too for pretty cheap in Japan and you're right you don't take you take it for granted until you get here yeah and I know you've only been here for like what a week two weeks now I've been here for five months and it's still just like yeah they, they say that like when you go to Japan um, you kind of have this honeymoon phase for like two years oh, where I had you it for like, like a week. everything's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> everything's perfect everything's great. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I'm going on four years of living in mm -hmm. Japan and I still feel like I love mm. living there and like there are things that I'm like not in the honeymoon phase for and yeah. then there's still things where I go to a new prefecture I'm like I love it here so much, it's mm. so perfect or whatever. Mm. Like when you came back to America, were you immediately like maybe I don't want to live here or? It wasn't immediate. It was like actually for the first couple months I felt pretty good, you know, mm. I, it was fine. Three months in, I still didn't have a job, mm. and I've been trying to search for a job for so long. In the Whereas in Japan, it was so easy. I always had a job lined up. I, yeah. I, I changed jobs like three times living in Japan, and mm. there was always something for a foreign person to do. Yeah, right. It was you could always teach. You always had teaching as a fallback if you right. didn't get a job in what you wanted to do. So I did teaching for three and a half years, and then mm. I did one year of IT work. Everything was always lined up. Even when I was told at my kindergarten job, "Oh, we're not going to extend your contract after this year." That was like two months. Yeah, I still found a job within that time frame, and I right. got a job. Meanwhile, here I literally searched for three months, and it's not even about not having jobs available. There are jobs available, but it's more of having jobs available that I can live off of. It's something I never thought I had to worry about, and don't even in the healthcare too. That was also another mm -hmm. thing. But it's because like I was always covered in Japan national health insurance, even if I didn't have a job. Yeah, but here you have to right and it's it's been it's been so weird and very different that it just it hit me harder than I thought so I guess you know we talked about transportation being a little mm -hmm. bit more difficult um, you know as as an English speaking foreigner mm -hmm. um, in Japan your jobs are plentiful oh plentiful. Uh, I, you know when Especially I left, Americans actually right, like, even right. more than some because they teach English American English, American English is English standard, standard yeah. so it, it, even more so for an American like person. when I left my teaching job there were my bosses were begging me to either stay mm -hmm. or begging me to find other friends mm -hmm. that could work for them and so like you're, you're never gonna be out of jobless job. you'll you have know, something for a long even time. if you don't like it but it's right. like at least you'll have a job you have something that will pay the bills right because that's the thing I never worried that I like I mean, interact you know mm -hmm. there were some months where you didn't get a lot of money with interact but for the most part you're paying your bills just I was fine. paying my bills paying. fine sure I didn't have a lot of money to do like what I wanted to do all the time or even build a savings account but it was like I had enough to do yeah meanwhile here luckily with my job now I'm able to start a savings account but it's like it, it, for most people they can't yeah it was during those three months is when I finally realized oh man did I, did I make the right decision mm -hmm. the last thing I mm -hmm. want to ask is um the food the food what's your opinion on the food I knew you were so excited to get back to America and have good American mm -hmm. food mm -hmm. But like, you know, would you trade the food here for Japanese? Because honestly, after being here for two weeks, mm -hmm. I'm really tired of the fast food. I'm tired. Of, I kind of mm -hmm. eat the same things in America. Mm -hmm. My palate in Japan, for some reason, I'm like way more open to different things. Mm -hmm. So I would not personally trade Japanese food for mm -hmm. their food here. What about you? So for a while, it was fine. I was actually like, oh, I'm excited to have hot wings again. I'm excited to have Chick-fil-A again and yeah, Bojangles. Same. I had so much Bojangles when I got back. It's insane. Yes. Um, but now being in five months, I do miss onigiri so much. Yeah. <laughs> so funnily onigiri enough, I, I miss rice balls out of anything right now. And I'm, I'm missing those traditional Japanese foods that you can get that really here, if you go to a Japanese restaurant, it's not really Japanese. It's like American, American kabuki yeah. In the, the same way the, that a like lot of grill. American food places in Japan are very Japan, Japanese. Jap oh, you want you, you want soy sauce on this? No, I want it this. I want regular lettuce, not daikon like lettuce yeah. or like the shaved. Yeah. You know what I'm talking? I, I know exactly what you're talking my about. My gosh, like if I go to and this is a small dig on Japan, not big, but if I if I want a food like with shredded lettuce on a taco, I don't want your like your 
shredded ones that the like, the, the, like the, the Asian yeah cabbage. the Asian cabbage I don't want that yeah. I want lettuce not cabbage I want lettuce but right. it's the same thing here but with Japanese food it's mm. like um, there are a few Japanese restaurants here that are actually like pretty good but no rice bowls mm. and then the only place I can find Japanese curry it's 7-eleven Japanese curry pretty much but not awful it does the job for me well I think that's really all we had to talk about I'm going back to Japan in a week so I'll get my fill on what I've missed unfortunately we'll have to wait a little bit longer to see <laughs> we'll what see. you're gonna do we'll but see. if you guys are interested in um, Andrew talking about things on his channel the Hokkaiden Gaijin I will put a link in the description of this video. How about yourself? Have you been to Japan and you experienced reverse culture shock when you came back to America? Or hey, did you go to a foreign country and experience culture shock or reverse culture shock of any kind? Let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it. I'll put his stuff in the description and take care guys. Thanks for watching. Bye guys. Bye.